Hello friend, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CVP Nuts video series on C++ and this video is about pure virtual function. So before this you must be knowing what is virtual function so that you will be able to understand this video because it's the extension of that, okay? So now I assume that you have watched my previous video which is about virtual functions. So let's go for this video. So the syntax is like virtual return type function name parameter and equal to zero. So this is going to be the syntax of your virtual function. And if you want to exactly see how it would look like in real scenario, this is the pure virtual function like virtual and then return type move. You can have any parameters here and equal to zero. This looks little weird like why you will equate some function with zero. We'll come to that. This is the main beauty of this function. The idea is you're telling that dude, I know I am an animal. I have a function name, but I don't have the body for that. So this is how you will tell to the computer and why all this we will see that. Okay. So there is a, this example. We'll see that with this, but let's go with the notes first. So the note says if some class can have only signature of the function, but not the body, then we use pure virtual function and why somebody I mean, some class will have only function signature, not the body. We'll see that. Second point, which is very important. Sometime in base class, we know the function name, but not the definition of the function. So we want derived classes to provide the definition of the functions. So if you will see this, there is this animal class. I'm going to take a traditional example, what people take so that if you don't understand somewhere else, you'll be able to understand here. So as I said, we have animal class, but animal meaning what? It's a generic term where you can think like, okay, there is something which is alive, which can move and breathe and probably can see, walk, run. So all these things will come in your mind, right? If someone says animal, so you will start defining the behavior of the animal here, but you exactly don't know what would be the type of movement. What I mean is, let's suppose we have uh, this move function and we can have other function for animal like eat. So they all eat, but we don't know because some animals only eat veg and others only eat non-veg. And there are a few animals, they eat both veg and non-veg. And we have specific terms for those animals. I don't know those terms, but you know, they eat, right? So like this, you can have functions in this animal, but you don't know how they will behave. Meaning if you will call eat, are they going to eat non-veg or veg? So it's like their own type would define their eating pattern, their moving pattern. So similarly, see, I have taken cow. Cow is an animal. So that's why we can inherit this animal class into the cow. And similarly, snake is also an animal. We can inherit this snake into this I mean, animal into this snake. And when we will say snake move, it will move rectilinear locomotion way, whereas cow can walk and run. So the movement of cow, buffalo and animal, they all can walk and run. But snakes like animal movement style is different. So they are called rectilinear locomotion but both fall into same category. They both are animal. So now you will think, why am I talking all these things? The reason is when you design a system, you design like this. What you say, okay, I will have one bigger entity like animal and these things are going to be the behavior of that entity. So for example, let's suppose you're creating a mobile class. So, this is going to be the base class. So, hey guys, it's time for a quick pause. And what you're seeing right now is my Patreon page. So if you don't know what is Patreon, it's a crowdfunding website where you can support any content creator like me. And in return, you get rewards. So if you join me, I can be your private tutor or you just want to chat with me and ask your doubts. Or maybe you just want to support me with very small amount and I'll still have something for you. So do visit my Patreon page and see if you like it. And if you want to discontinue anytime, you can do that. So if you have already visited my Patreon page, let's continue our video. now. When you design a system, you see that, okay, I will have something like mobile. Then you define 
how that would look like or what features you will have so you will have screen and you will have ram how much you'll define it will play music it will play game all that thing so let's suppose your class is ready and you call that class as mobile okay so this is the one now you will inherit so many mobiles will be there like i don't know i don't remember the mobile name maybe samsung x1 i don't know is there any mobile like that moto g x <laughs> and some some mobile okay so all these mobiles will inherit this base class mobile then only they can call themselves a mobile this is how it works in programming so how did you define this base class mobile you said it should have a screen it should play music it should be able to play game it should be able to call <laughs> most important feature <laughs> but any mobile can have whatever the size of the screen doesn't matter right maybe it can be x size it can be y size okay so size can be different that's why when you was creating this mobile class you could not give the size exact size but what you said it will have size it will have this it will have that but you don't know the exact figure but you said okay it will have this that this that this that and now if you're telling yourself that okay i am mobile then you have to inherit this mobile and you have to implement all those functions yeah this is very important now see this you said animal move now if it is cow it will have its own movement style and if it is snake type animal it will have its own movement style okay now the important point is as this cow wants to tell that i want sorry i am an animal here it is like cow is an animal this inheritance is is a relationship right so cow is an animal and if cow wants to say that then cow has to implement or in layman term have to give the definition of the function what's there in this animal as pure virtual function because this class is telling that i know what all functions i will be doing but the derived class have to give the definition for that because it depends on the derived class how they want to behave on my functions and if they fail to do this maybe let's suppose you are not giving this move function here see if you are not giving this and let's suppose you are trying to create cow see it will give you an error error is object of abstract class type cow is not allowed meaning in simple term it is like you have inherited animal but you are not giving this function definition so we cannot instantiate meaning you cannot create an object of that whereas you can create a reference and a pointer so i'll show you that so if you create this pointer see there is no problem this will automatically go see it it's gone and if you will create the reference again it will not be an issue but you cannot create a simple object meaning you cannot instantiate this object because this is incomplete this is not complete you have to give the definition of this move here then only you can call yourself animal so this you see is like a restriction to the derived classes that if you want to call yourself animal you have to implement this function so this works this way also like if you want to call yourself something you have to implement all these functions what i provide then only you can call yourself animal you can have your extra functions i don't care so this animal is saying that you can have n number of functions with you i don't care but you have to have these functions what i give okay and similarly goes for the snack so let's see the theory if i am missing something here so sometime in base class okay i have gone through this yeah so sometime in base class we know the function name but not the definition of the function so now you understood right why you don't know the definition of the function why you only know the signature of the function because it is a base class there will be n number of derived classes and they will have have their own definition for that correct yeah and next point is we can actually give body of pure virtual function okay this is cool i mean if you will ask this point no maybe 10 15 years 20 years of experience guy can miss this point you know i have seen people really don't know this that you can actually give the body of this function in animal class 
and you can call that body. There is no issue. Now you might be thinking, how would I give that? You can give it like this. Return type, you have void and then animal and then move. So this is how you'll give the body. And you can have, this is, sorry, my keyboard is gone, animal class. So this is going to be the bonus of this video if you already knew what virtual function meaning and you just wanted to see my video. So this is the bonus. Maybe you didn't know that, okay, this move function can have the body and you can actually call this body from any function here. So let's implement this function also, void move, sorry, it's keyboard, not me, C out, I can, <laughs> I can walk, oh my God, walk and run. Mm -hmm. And from here, you can access animal move function. But before this, Oh, I'm getting some error here. Oh, yes, it should be accessible, correct? Yeah, so this is public, now you can access this. Okay, shall we run this program and see what is the output? So I'll compile this, compile successfully. If I'll execute this, it's not printing anything. I'm so sorry, I just forgot to call c.move. <laughs> okay, compile again. Oh my God, what is this? Okay, c.move. Oh yeah, same mistake. We don't have public here and similarly public here. Uh, this is pretty common mistake. Yeah, compile successfully, executed. So this is animal class, this can walk, I mean, I can walk and run. So if you see this, you're calling this move function, which is of animal class. And people don't know that there is something like this facility available to you. So one of the interviewer in some company asked me long, long back that why Rupesh, why you will give the definition of this pure virtual function where you say that, okay, I, I don't want to give the definition because I don't have the definition. And, and then <laughs> next line, you're giving the definition. What is this contradictory stuff? And I was like, no, actually this can be useful. What if there is a common thing in between all the move of your derived classes like snake and cow. Maybe uh, you just want to print some function before moving. You just want to shout like, hey, I'm going to move. So this is what you will be doing, whatever the animal you are, like cow, snake. If you apply this, that you have to shout, hey, I'm going to move like this. For each and every animal, then that becomes common. And that common thing, you don't have to write in each and every function. You just keep it here. And whenever you need that, you just call that here. Or there can be n number of different things you can do here. You can just put some comment like uh, uh, here. We can comment like uh, this function would include moving your body part from one place to another place, correct? So this give you some hint to the implementer of derived classes that what should be the behavior of this move class, correct? I don't know, maybe whatever you want to take this function for, you can do it. But you can give the definition of this function, which you call, I can't give the definition for. And I already told you that if you will not give the definition in the derived class, it won't work. So let's look at another point. We can give the body. Yeah, we saw that. If you have pure virtual function in your class, it means that class is an abstract class and you cannot create an object of that class. Yes, I already told you that, but I didn't tell that you cannot create the object of this animal class because this is abstract class. It is incomplete class. See, it is saying that where is the, yeah, object of abstract class type animal is not allowed because it is abstract. It's not complete. Okay. Even if we have this function here, then also it's not complete. I cannot create the object of this, but you can create reference and pointer. So if I'll create the pointer here, see it's gone and reference. 
C. Then also it's gone. So that's why I mentioned here. But pointer and references can be created. And the use case of this type of classes, which you call abstract class, is to create abstract classes, obviously, which helps in creating the interfaces, which we call APIs. So I'll create different videos for all these things, maybe, in order to understand better. For now, you just take this much from this video that there is a way for you to call that I know my class will have this function, but I don't know the body of this function because this is a generic class and you have to inherit this class and you have to implement these functions. And this point, main point, you can give the body of pure virtual function. You didn't knew this, right? Comment. You have to comment if you knew or if you didn't knew this. I want to know how many people already knew this. And you can amaze your friend, professor, colleague with this small thing. I know that it's always cool to learn new things. So with this, I'll sum this video. I, I hope I'm not missing anything. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.